buckle up because it's gonna be a long ride it's gonna be a wild ride nobody cares but we're gonna tell you anyways this is popcorn chats <laughs> what's up everybody welcome back to popcorn chats i'm katie i'm mckay and this week we're gonna be talking about house of the motherfucking dragon bitch because it's the best show ever we are just coming off of episode eight in season one of House of the Dragon, and we're gonna be talking about this episode in particular, episode eight, and about the episodes that we missed since we talked about the first two a couple weeks ago. We're probably gonna be talking about the rest of the season episode by episode, and especially the finale, and just talking about the show because Mikhail and I are both watching it right now. We're both caught up, and we're just like very enthralled with this show, which honestly, thank God, because mm-hmm. if it would have been a flop, I don't know if I could have handled that in this emotional Mm. state in my life glad that we're both loving it can't wait to talk about it i know we haven't been doing a whole lot of like spooky things this spooky season but it's hard because michaela refuses to watch anything spooky (laughs) by herself and to be fair it's not like there's been a new movie out that it's been like that we've been dying to cover you know i like just enjoying scary movies you know like i like being fully immersed and when we do stuff for the pod obviously i love it but we have to like take notes during it and be like thinking comprehensively about it check in Mm -hmm. how are you do you have time to check in or should we hop off (laughs) oh no i have enough time i'll tell it quickly so on friday afternoon i realized that my air conditioner was not working it was like 75 degrees in my apartment i was like that's weird i keep it set at 70 and it wasn't working so i put in a maintenance request but obviously since it was on a friday afternoon my maintenance man didn't come out until monday to look at it and when he saw it he was like oh it's all frozen he was like there's nothing I can do about it. I'll call the air conditioning company. Air conditioning guy comes on Tuesday to look at it and he says that, okay, and granted, I don't fully understand. He was like, do you have any questions? And I was like, do I look like someone who understands this shit? No, go tell it to the maintenance man. But he told me that there was a pipe or something in it that was fractured and the unit turned itself off because it could have emitted carbon monoxide oh my god and i was like you told that to the wrong bitch because now i'm sitting here thinking that my child i me immediately first thought i don't give a fuck if i go to sleep and i don't wake up and carbon monoxide kills me couldn't care less but i have two children in my apartment it does sounds ideal however i have two children that i love and care for more than anything in the entire world and the thought of anything happening to them no 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 boy, no. So my thing is like entirely broken. So he's like, I can't repair it. You're going to have to get a whole new unit put in here. So he leaves. And then the guys came and just put a new one in today. So I now have a new air conditioner and heater, but I have not turned it on yet. Like I'm aware it's working. Like they turned it on when they left, but I turned it off because I am scared now of carbon monoxide emitting from it. So I think my dad thought that the thing would have a built-in sensor in it, like a built-in alarm in the system, but that's not good enough for me. I ordered carbon carbon monoxide detectors off of mm-hmm. Amazon. So they'll be here tomorrow. And I refuse to turn it on until tomorrow when I have those detectors plugged in. Because that's spooky. That is so, spooky. What the fuck? I don't like I never, that. yeah, I never had a fear of carbon monoxide until Tuesday. So now, I, um, yeah. <laughs> it's that fear for me that I'm not afraid of it until I remember it's a thing. And then I'm like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Carbon yeah. monoxide. That was my little week update. It's just been a crazy, like other things aside, it's just been like a crazy week. And then to add that on top of it. So, um, yeah, it's a little toasty in here still, but it's like, man, it's a perfect time of year, you know, to have mm-hmm. something like this happen. Like I haven't really needed heat or air this week. Um, mm-hmm. It's been like a little toast, toasty in here, but nothing like horrible. Nothing like you've had LA with no air conditioning all summer. Kitties are okay. We're all okay. But, um, yeah, I will wait until I have those detectors. Yeah, I'm glad that everything's okay. I'm glad that the system stopped working so that it wouldn't emit carbon dioxide or monoxide into your yeah. home. Oh, shit like that. Like, anything adult. I just can't. I know. And thank God that I'm, like, renting because I didn't have to do any of that. Like, I didn't have to call the co- I just had to get online, boop, 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 submit my little maintenance request. And then they've had to deal with all that shit. And then also, like, the pain. Like, it didn't cost me anything because it's just, like, covered in my rent and stuff. Right. Plus side of renting. And that does... I don't think I'm going to be able to buy anything myself when, like, my lease is up. So I'm, like, if I have to keep renting, honestly, it's not horrible. It, I'm just, like, losing money. But it's not that bad in terms of, like, I would have had to figure all this shit out by myself where mm-hmm. I didn't have to do that. 
which I like. Yeah, I don't so, know yeah. how anyone could be expected to, like, buy a home. I think especially by yourself. When you have, like, someone else to do everything with, it, that's manageable. But to do everything on your own, mm-hmm. that's just a lot. Anywho, how are uh, you? I'm good. I am chilling. It's actually getting a lot, like, not a lot chillier here, but it's, like, super pleasant. I can wear my beanie, my emotional support beanie again, which I love. And, yeah, everything's good. Just gearing up for the premiere that I talked about last week. If you're in the L.A. area, consider coming to the short film premiere for Stoker Street and you can see the trailer for my feature film that I wrote and am directing called Bittersweet Nostalgia. But yeah, the premiere for Stoker Street is happening at 4220 Sunset Boulevard at the Painted Lady LA Tattoo Shop. They're doing a flash sale and then you can watch the short film. You can dress up, wear a costume. You could literally wear pajamas. That's fine too. Like wear whatever you want and come see the short film that we made. Oh my god. I thought that the girl, the girl who plays young Rhaenyra, I literally thought Mm -hmm. she was at my job the other day because (gasps) the store was empty. I'm stalking, right? And then I see this gorgeous blonde head of hair. And I was like, oh, cute. I did like a double take and I was like, whoa, that looks like Millie, whatever the fuck her name is. I was like, I was like really squinting and like really looking. I think she noticed me like trying to see and I was like is that her and I like looked up on our um like our registry thing because we have to like scan people's IDs I like looked at her name and it wasn't the actress but I was like I swear to god if that's her right now I'm about to lose my shit because I was like would she just be walking around I feel like she wouldn't be just walking around by herself but then I was also like like she she could could. like yeah I feel like she still could like she's not huge huge she's like, not like she bodyguard famous you security. know security yeah and you like rihanna just walks around fucking my street that i work on robertson like she has like her one security guard or whatever but she'll like go in and shop at kits and kids and that's because she has a baby but like i feel like we have this idea of celebrities where they're just like always with bodyguards and shit but i think that's only like a certain that's like you that's like a certain level of right fame. i wish it was her but it was not alas um also i just forgot one other um random thing i hit seven thousand subscribers yes today. or not today i hit it a couple of days ago so here's hoping i was thinking i was like would i be able to get to 10k by the end of the year no way so yes. that'll be like early next year goal because it typically takes me about like two and a half months for like a thousand about like two and a half months i'm like it won't happen this year but next year as long as Hell nobody cancels yes. me <laughs> cancels me <laughs> no we're not canceling you <laughs> that's exciting congrats buddy i'm so proud of thank you thank you should we jump in let's fucking talk about it first of all i just have to say have you seen that tiktok floating around i think i sent it to you the one where she's like what's your drink of choice a Negroni. A Negroni. Spagliato with Prosecco, with in, Prosecco it. in it. That TikTok Ooh, lovely. has... <laughs> oh, stunning. St- oh, that stunning. That has it. me by the goddamn throat. It has me in a mm-hmm. chokehold. Both of these women, or both of these people, I don't know their pronouns, but Jesus Christ. Ramira a- and Allison, like the characters alone, mm-hmm. I'm speechless every time. They are on screen, especially on screen together, bitch. Yeah, what were you going to say about the actresses, actors? So Emma goes by they, them, who plays Rhaenyra, and Alicent goes by she, her. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. I am completely enthralled, and I feel like everybody is with that TikTok. I saw somebody, like, make the drink, and I was like, it sounds delicious. And I'm, like, ready to go, <laughs> I know. go to the bar and be like, can I have a House of the Dragon drink, please? <laughs> That bar should just know that. That's that's how it should be rebranded is mm-hmm. the House of the Dragon drink. Did you see that they have House of the Dragon wines? Really? Like specific brand yeah, with like Targaryen labels on it and everything. Oh, They're shit. They're like all reds, it looks like I think, but I would buy all three of them because they just look cool. Do you like, know if what I brand saw one it is? in person, I'd buy one. I think it's like its own. Oh thing. shit. Okay, that's pretty dope. So I wanna buy like I wanna get one just to like display it, you know, I'll mm-hmm. never drink it, but pretty and it's only like sixteen dollars, like that's not expensive. That's not yeah, that bad. cool thing to have on your fucking liquor cabinet. So if I ever see it out, I'm gonna buy it. I think mm-hmm. I've only seen people ha- see them at like World Market, like that grocery oh. store, and it's like I don't think we have a World Market near us. So which is surprising because there's a thousand grocery stores in Sun Prairie. <laughs> but 
But then, yeah, like, there's no, no Trader Joe's over here. I know. Either. That's the dumbest fucking thing. And then you guys are so close to an Aldi's. For me, I live right by a Trader Joe's, but there's no Aldi near me. I have to go all the way to yeah. fucking Glendale, bitch. And I'm not trying to go all the way out there. But well, I'm also not trying to spend money. an arm and a leg. <laughs> I'm not trying to spend $100 on groceries. So mm-hmm. I make the trip to Aldi's because they got good fucking prices, baby. I'm a Woodman's bitch on. through and through because that's <laughs> cheap. Where do we even want to start? So do we want to do standout star, standout scene from episode of 8? The, specifically of episode, this episode 8? Yeah, Let's sure. Because we we specifically... then we'll talk like over our sheen, like who's our stand, like who we're loving, you know? But like mm-hmm. for episode mm-hmm. 8. This is hard. I don't know, dude. This is stupid. But I feel like my standout star would have to be King Viserys. That's that's my standout stu- star. Really? Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I was worried that you were going to judge me for saying that. No, he was the amazing. The man pulled through. He pulled through. And that actor gave the performance of his life. I don't care what anybody says. <gasps> oh, my God. He, I have, like, chills ate. just, like, thinking about it. He ate. He, he did. Ate. He ate blown away because this Mm -hmm. entire fucking season every time like every new episode when he's still alive i'm like you've got to be fucking kidding me how has this old crusty dusty busty man not passed away yet like he Mm -hmm. has been on his last legs since the premiere Mm -hmm. (laughs) like i'm so sorry it's all been worth it bitch to Mm -hmm. see him critchety crotcheting crutching his way up to the throne to defend his daughter Rhaenyra and her claim mm-hmm. to the Iron Throne and his grandson's claim to Driftmark or whatever the fuck. His mask is a sleigh. It's a, it's a sleigh. It's a look. It's, I love it. Yes. I love anything like that. I also love Patchy the Pirate. I don't know if this is like an unpopular opinion, but I really like that character. I liked when he was a kid. I like him now. I'm rooting for him. I don't know why. I'm also like not rooting for him because fuck Allison and her kids. If I'm rooting for any of that, it's patchy he's hot (laughs) i'm into it okay also i feel like we should preface right here you still are spoiler free correct on like how things happen yes yeah i have no idea how anything happens i am as well i know i've seen one creator being like don't try to say that you can redeem him don't try to say that you'll change him they're like this is not the character for that oh is he bad does he really bad i guess i guess so I guess so. All right, I feel like I think okay. I'm going to end up spoiling myself because here's the thing. If we don't get the next season until 2024, am I really going to like not want to know what happens to all these characters for two whole years? And then still that's only like the next season. It's not even like the ending when we know what happened when like everything happens. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know if I have that self-control. I'm having a hard time. I want to get your opinion on something, but do you want to do... Do you want to elaborate on your standout star? Yes, I just, I agree with everything that Katie said. I saw someone tweet that, like, Viserys is the ultimate girl dad. And, like, he really is. I think out of all of the kings that we've kind of seen, even throughout the original Game of Thrones, he was, like, pretty decent. He's, like, I think just a a decent guy. You know, obviously he has his faults. He made mistakes, whatever. But I do just think, like, his love for Rhaenyra is, like, the most redeemable quality about him. And I did, and, like, his speech at dinner when he was, like, you know, talking about, like, his family and stuff, you just, you know that he genuinely loves his kids, where, like, that's not really the case that we've seen for everyone in this universe of Game of Thrones. I appreciate that. It kind of reminded me a bit of, like, Ned Stark-ish. You know, yeah. like, how you could tell that, like, how Ned Stark felt about his kids is how the series feels about Rhaenyra. It's kind oh. of, like, same level of floppiness with... Yeah. Ned and Viserys like there are certain moments like when he's like I'm no longer a handsome man I'm like you better be, you better follow that with like I don't know if I ever was and when he did I was like thank the lord at least he knows like come on yeah. now just cause you've that lost you your eyeball and now you're like a little you got leprosy up the ass like baby you were never that fucking cute to begin with um, and but just him you were a good him. dad to Rhaenyra yeah he was a good dad and he like I think I think this episode really solidified that it's never I mean it has always been like a little bit about pride and like he did name her heir and then he didn't want to like go back on his word or his decision making but it's also like this episode really proved that it's also about his like love for her and his belief mm-hmm. in her yeah the speech to his family at the end was really sweet yeah like they did talk about how there's been like peace throughout his pretty much his entire reign like he's managed to maintain mm-hmm. peace so like that's 
a huge testament <laughs> like his even though he's kind of like vanilla and lackluster and like not super an amazing outstanding king he's like a decent leader and keeps the peace and like keeps people prosperous and like happy which is more than like other kings that we've seen can say i don't think he's evil you know no, like he's, right. he's not like the most competent but he's also not I think, like, a bad person. Right. So. And he's not like Robert Baratheon where... Because, like, Robert Baratheon wasn't evil, but he also was, like, not a good he king just, at no. all. <laughs> and no. he, at least he wasn't like that, you know? Yeah, and I th- I love the actor who played him. I think he did a good job. Because we had said at the beginning of the season, we didn't know how series character was going to end or, like, how long he was going to be here. But we were like, it's never good for the character that starts in power in a show like this because right. that'd be boring for them to, like, hold that power. But I feel like he made the most... I I feel like all these actors that have been there for a short amount of time, like the younger actresses for Alicent and Rhaenyra, they all made the most with the time mm-hmm. that they had with those characters. And yeah, they really gave they it their the all. Yeah, the series definitely like hit his expiration date. He he dragged that shit out till the very fucking end, but it it was good. He definitely lasted a lot longer than I thought he would, and just the pacing of it all and the decision making I thought was on point. Like. OG perfect Game of Thrones like storytelling and Mm -hmm. character development and everything being like meticulous and purposeful. I just loved it. I love this episode for Viserys character. What about your standout scene? It was when he showed up to the hearing type thing that they were having and Otto's up there. Get the fuck off of the Iron Throne, you yeah. hot face. Ew. Uh, I don't Bye. know who you think you are. I mean, I know you're the hand, but literally get the fuck down from there. And when he showed up, I was like almost, I was like feeling emotional seeing him show up for his daughter and for his grandsons. And yeah, he has other children, but clearly he doesn't give a fuck about them or like any of them. And watching him make his way to there. And then also when he got there and his crown fell and then mm-hmm. Damon came in and like he wouldn't let the guards help him, but he let Damon help him. And Damon mm-hmm. put the crown back on his head. Oh, that was a huge moment for Damon's character. Yes, love his character for so many fucking reasons. That moment right there was just incredible. That was my favorite. Yeah, my jaw. Well, my jaw literally dropped at something else in that scene, which we'll get into. <laughs> but that scene right there had me like there. That had my full attention. Yeah, that was what great. Was yours. That was mine as well. Especially when Damon was there to help him, and it just kind of wrapped up that. I mean, we still don't fully know Damon's intentions. Like, I still think he has this, like, lust for power. But I, it really solidified him as being on Team Rhaenyra. And, like, he believes in her as, like, a ruler and everything, too. And he wants... He's kind of, like, settled the bad blood between him and Viserys, too. And, like, he's there for his brother. And I loved that moment. That's that's definitely a standout scene for me for this episode and probably this entire series. So I have a question with what you just said about Damon. So even after episode eight, do you still see him or like think that he has like a lust for power? Oh yeah, I think he has a lust for power, but like him and Rhaenyra as a team, not like okay. him himself. Like he, I think he wants to be king for sure. Oh, okay. And he's going to be if Rhaenyra is the queen, like he's going to be king. Um, I have a question for you about like pacing or mm. like I keep going back and forth about their decision to age up the actors and everything. And like some part of me is like they should have just done this full season with the younger actresses first and then like done a second season with the older actresses. But then we wouldn't necessarily get these moments that are so awesome, like standout moments that we're getting. Like the payoff with Damon and Rhaenyra maybe could have been better if that didn't happen until season two when she was like older and we saw her younger years play out a little bit longer. I don't know. Do you have any opinions about that? Like if they should have kept the same actors and actresses for season one and then moved on in season two. Yeah, I think it did. uh, Was it episode six? I think when they switched over and it felt like a second pilot episode, Mm -hmm. honestly, because they're just huge parts of the show. They're not like side characters getting recast. Like with the kids, you know, like their kids that they end up having yeah those i don't really care as much seeing those get recasted because obviously mm-hmm. we're not like following them specifically throughout this whole story at, up to this point so i think it felt like it's moving very quickly on the other side of that i know that the bulk of the story takes place with alicent's children and like rainier's children being older and mm-hmm. like after Viserys is dead so i understand why they 
were like, okay, well, if we want to get to the bulk of the story, we need to like get a move on. But yeah. they are going like really, really quickly with the pace. And I do think it would have been good to have the characters for a whole season. But then again, did they want to drag it out for a whole season? Right. Yeah, we don't want filler episodes. Like I would definitely take yeah. these heart pounding. And this story is about who's going to take the throne because mm-hmm. this is in the world of Game of Thrones and that's what it what it's always been about and this family there's like so much tension within it and so many stakes and so many different people who feel that they have claim equal claims to the throne which is very reflective of the original series that we know and love who really deserves to be sitting on the throne so i guess people who have read the book like fire and blood there are like other stories that they think they could tell from that like Aegon's conquest who was like the beginning of Mm -hmm. all of this like people really want that show and other storylines throughout the family history so Mm -hmm. again if they want to produce those or want to like hop on that because again you have this audience in a chokehold house of the dragon is super successful if you want to get to those other stories you Mm -hmm. also don't want to spend an entire season with them as younger teenagers yeah absolutely Absolutely. And with the time jump, we get to continue the story, Rhaenyra and her claim to the throne and all that stuff. So I think it works. I think it makes sense. And yeah, not having read the book, I'm I'm not 100% certain. But part of me also wonders like if they felt pressured to tell a complete story in one season just in case it flopped and didn't go over well because of how bad the last season was received. That could very well be it too. If it's going to be at this caliber, like I am ready for any and all game of thrones like reboot spin-off prequel sequel like anything because if if this type of like care and effort is put into it as house of the drag as much as being put into this production like i'm all for it you know i have nothing nothing against like remakes or sequels it's when it's like half-assed and just using the original as like a, a name to get people to watch it that's where i have a problem with it but if it's like made by people who really appreciated the source material and people who genuinely care about what they're doing then I have no qualms agreed I would love to see like people who have read the books and like are really immersed in this world they've I've seen them like on TikTok of being like what stories they would like to see most and the ones I see the most are Aegon's conquest of like him and his two sisters which sounds incredible <laughs> and then mm-hmm. Robert's rebellion like Robert Baratheon mm-hmm. so then you'd have mm-hmm. like young Ned Stark young Robert young Stannis like all that oh I think that would be incredible yeah. and yes I would and love then you could see anything. More. You could see Ned's sister like going off with the Targaryen yep. and having that affair, and that would be super interesting. Yes. I'm here for yeah. it. Somebody was like saying that Rhaenyra's most recent child with Damon, they named him, they named one of them Viserys and one of them Aegon. And they were like, oh, that's Aegon. That's that's Danny's dad. I'm like, bitch, no, it's not. No. And Rhaenyra's it was like a, her eighth great grandmother. It was a man saying this to me. And I was like, there's 200 years in between Rhaenyra and Danny. He just kept going. He would not drop it. And it was just like one of those things. Sometimes I'll be like in the middle of being mansplained something from a man and it's like just drop it like it's not mm-hmm. worth the effort like you're never gonna be able to like help them see you're just simply not correct like that's <laughs> not her dad bro he's Wrong. like that's the mad king that's the mad king i'm like no it's not no. Like, you're gonna be so surprised when I tell you this. <laughs> there's like a million Aegons just like currently in this time mm-hmm. period. You got six of them named Aegon. You got them marrying each other's sister, sister brother. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, I'm so sorry. I can't keep track. We're marrying cousins. We're marrying literal siblings to each other. I refer to the family tree that I had, I sent you that family tree, right? Yeah. I, I refer, refer to, to that, that all the time. Often, yes. I feel like things now, like after that dinner, I kind Kind of feel like I have a firmer grasp on like who's who. I for a while was like, wait, so did Aegon, did Allison really make her son and daughter marry each other? And then I was like, no. And then when she stood up at dinner and was like, he mostly just ignores you, I was like, nope, yep, brother and sister married. Allison, bitch. I got so many fucking issues with her. Allison is gay and bitter. 
I'm so sorry, but it's true. She is capital L lesbian. She is bitter. She's literally, she started all this beef with her friend because her friend went out and had a little hookup Mm -hmm. and then was like, hey, I'm just not going to tell you about it. Literally where her beef started with her. Katie, if I went out and hooked up with someone and I didn't want to like share with you because I knew that like it's, you know, like not for the times, you know, whatever. And if you created tens of years of beef with me over that, bitch, you're just mad that you had to marry my dad. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry you had to marry my dad. And I'm sorry that I'm out here getting dicked down. Just because, I'm sorry, but they they were in love. You don't just spend, like, hours reading in a meadow. Like, that's some lesbian behavior. I don't care what anybody says. This is true for me. And if it's not true for the writers or the creators or the actors, I don't give a flying fuck. This is my truth, and I'm speaking it on this podcast because it's our show. And mm-hmm. I can say what I want. And yeah, I will go down in history saying that Allison is gay and bitter. I have never seen this type of behavior happen with a straight woman. Um, It is completely off the cuff. When she sliced Rhaenyra's arm, I'm quaking. You can't do that. You're fucking crazy. That goes beyond, like, you could say the argument of, like, oh, she's being, like, mama bear, mama lioness, protective of her kids. Bitch, have you seen her kids? They're flops. Every single one of them. Two are married to each other. One of them's jacking off out a window. I'm sorry. Ew, he was so gross. He's a literal (sighs) sex offender. Just Mm -hmm. being fucking tragic. She doesn't even like her kids. So I don't want to hear this argument about her being, like, protective of her children. She is gay and bitter. And she's a power bitch. Like, on top of all that, she is smart as fuck. She is Mm -hmm. her father's daughter Mm -hmm. making power bitch moves. Mm -hmm. And she was dealt a horrible hand with these floppy ass kids. But she's still Mm going to try her best to make it work and like keep Mm -hmm. her family in power. Keep the high tower Mm -hmm. flag raised high or whatever the fuck. And she doesn't care how she does it. Like with the one guy killing Sir Harwin. She doesn't care. She can act like Mm -hmm. she's like, I didn't know you would do that. She doesn't care. That guy, like that guy is spooked. I don't like him. No, he's going to be like the Peter B. Um, He is. He's going to be the Peter B. Get more bloodshed on his hands, I think. Yeah, and I feel like he's he's like more unsuspecting and he's just like, ooh, I'm just a little lad. But no, he's not. He's, don't fuck with him. I'm scared of him. Like, I'm more scared of him than Peter B. Same. Because Peter B, he had like, I think he still had like flop energy early Mm -hmm. on and like Mm -hmm. trying to, he's like the try hard kid in gym class. Where like this dude, you're so right. It really is like so unsuspecting and just like, almost like sociopathic in a way you know where he's like i don't feel anything i'm just gonna sit here and kill my dad and my brother so my prediction is that that he is going to swoop in on allison and try and marry her now that she is a single woman Mm -hmm. that series has passed on well you know otto's gonna try to find someone for her and then bringing in her dad and she's like well he would be partial to me and it's like bitch that's not how things work (laughs) there's still the realm to think about it's not just you sorry i know we are getting ahead of our but the guy with the cane he was like I, I'm sure you'll think of a way to repay me so I feel like he's gonna blackmail her mm-hmm. cause if um, Rhaenyra finds out that she killed Sir Harwin you're out you five thousand. well actually I don't know if she, she, it's not like she can do anything cause you know she mm-hmm. can't like do anything but uh, R.I.P. Sir Harwin gone too soon you were so yeah. fine mm-hmm. we never even got a sex scene yeah. I mean I'm glad that Damon and her together because I support it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm I glad like that they Sir didn't Harwin. kill. I'm glad that they didn't kill Lane or if it were me. Yeah, ally, let him live his life. But if it were me and his mom was like coming up to me and being like, "You killed my son." There's no fucking way. I am already not the best at like keeping secrets, and I would be like, "Listen, he's out there living his life." But then you know that they would like go and fetch him and like make him do his duty and be the heir to Driftmark or whatever the fuck. So like, go Rhaenyra for not you know letting that truth out but you know i would be like listen mama bear i didn't kill your son i i just would struggle too much with her not liking me because mm. rainice is intimidating i, I love her too love her also yeah. her coming out with the like support what changed her mind what happened there did she just ruminate on the prospect of her granddaughters marrying Rhaenyra's sons yeah so I don't know if there's like an actual answer like I haven't seen anything like from the writers saying what their intention was with it but what I see is I think she knows that she can't I think she sees the crazy of Alicent and Otto and knows that she can't join their side because she'll never get ahead against them because she would have 
no footing with them. Like, they don't care about her whatsoever. Where with Rhaenyra, it's family, which, like, even if family's, like, a little strained, whatever, I still think she sees... Rhaenyra and Damon as power that she can yeah. work with, where I think she sees Alicent and Otto as power that she can't work with. Kind of like in yeah, Survivor. they're like you know your they're two like erratic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very unhinged, erratic behavior because she's too logical for it. Yeah, Allison is definitely not thinking clearly. I also was confused why Rhaenys wasn't at the dinner afterwards with Viserys. It felt weird that she wasn't there and that her and yeah. Rhaenyra didn't have like a talk about like what was that about and Rhaenys being like you owe me or something so I'll be interested yeah. to see how that gets re- resolved because I feel like it was intentional that she wasn't there like there has to be something coming up where the two of them are going to meet again and kind of reconvene and then I'm interested to see what happens to her husband because there's no way that he's dead and we just didn't see that you know there's no way he died off screen yeah we'll definitely have to see what happens that. But the moment that my jaw literally dropped. Oh, shoot. What's his name? Corlys' brother. Yeah. Um, I don't know what his name is. And I don't care anymore because he's dead. <laughs> but yeah. buddy, read the room. I get it. You're not wrong. Okay. Everyone can see that her kids don't look anything like Lenore. Okay. Mm-hmm. But read the fucking room, buddy. You're not going to get ahead if you don't have your head on your body anymore. And yeah. Like, that's what happened. Like if he would have kept his cool for longer, he could have like waited waited for Allison to do something like dude you're dumb which like I don't care bye I didn't care about you whatsoever but it was a jaw-dropping moment and then when Damon was like say it Mm -hmm. that did something to me he beheaded him then he was like he can keep his tongue bitch Damon you do the most with the least amount of lines in Mm -hmm. this show right now (laughs) yeah he's very understated but his actions are huge like that action and then the action of like helping Viserys get to the get to the throne like that shit's wild but yeah I think it's very interesting being in the audience and like rooting for Rhaenyra and like her children who are bastards who technically aren't they I mean they still are heirs to the throne just it's just because she's like a woman in the original Game of Thrones we're we're rooting against the Lannisters and like we're like well they don't even have a claim to the throne because they are not Robert Baratheons the script is kind of lipped in this way but also like not really it's very different but it's like it's interesting how these writers can make us root for bastard children I say in quotes in one mm-hmm. story and root against them in a different story and even in the same story you know like we're rooting for Jon Snow who's technically a bastard and then we're rooting against Joffrey who's also a bastard like yeah I think he he was just so frustrated and reached his boiling point. It was like, f- whatever. Like, and he was just angry and got his shit rocked. And he probably thought there was going to be like a trial and stuff for him for being, being treasonous. But he didn't even get a trial. He just got his shit fucking chopped off. I guess maybe after he died, was that when Rhaenys was like, I agree with the betrothal? Or was that before he died? I think that was before. Because I feel like that thing kind of like ended once he, yeah. once the guy was beheaded. Well, damn. It is so funny to me, Aegon talking shit to Jace about his, like, <laughs> sexual abilities while he's literally married to his sister. Yeah. Aegon yikes. is such a flop. He is. He really is. And the fact that he's, like, the eldest born son, but he looks, like, ten years younger than his younger brother. Mm-hmm. I think they did a spot-on casting with... Amund, youngest eye patchy man. I think that casting is great. I think he's gonna do a lot with that character. However, he looks so much fucking older than everyone else, and he's like literally supposed to be the youngest. Even Rainier's children, Jason Luke, they look like literal teenagers. Yeah. Amon, Aegon, and oh, what's the sister's name? I can't remember yeah, her name. Something. His wife, his sister wife. She, again, like they both look like teenagers. Amund looks late 20s, easily. <laughs> I don't get why he looks so much older than the rest yeah, of them. Yeah, but it is weird, but I could see that actor like playing him for a while. I I think so. I think he's going to keep yeah. that character up, which I'm excited for. I'm really excited to see him and Damon's dynamic moving forward, especially after that standoff mm-hmm. at dinner where like no one can really kind of control Eamon, or you see that like Allison clearly doesn't have a handle on him whatsoever. When Damon just stares at him, he backs down. Mm-hmm. So I am interested to see how that all plays out between the two of them. Rhaenyra's sons didn't grow up in King's Landing, but Aegon and Eamon did, and Eamon had 
has this like sword fighting ability and also i feel like this episode was so good because we barely had any chris and cole bye bitch get the fuck out no oh one fucking my likes God. you remember in game of thrones when we would be like wow this episode's really good i wonder why and it's like oh brand wasn't in this episode or like <laughs> yeah crazy how certain characters it's like just get off my screen i need a breather mm-hmm. for an episode like i don't want you here but it's just interesting like they're getting all this training so like how is that gonna play out where, you know, Jace is, like, trying to speak Valyrian and trying to, like, take on this kingly role. He we'll needs to learn some combat skills. Like, Damon mm-hmm. needs to take him outside and get him some combat skills. Because he's going to need it, and he doesn't have it. And it's great that he's learning Valyrian, but, dude, you got to pick up something else. Um, yeah, Kristen Cole fucking native you just know if him and Allison were in our society today that they would have been like Trumpies they would have had like make America great again hats apparel like they would have been those people that people interview on TikTok where they contradict themselves with their own stupidity Chris and Cole is literally botched he's an incel and he's bitter about it him and Allison Mm -hmm. are both bitter that's why Mm -hmm. they teamed up he dropped his vows so quickly yeah so quickly for Rhaenyra and then he got mad at her that she was like, hey, I'm still, like, trying to be queen. I'm not trying to run away with you. What do you think? You think because we hooked up one time, I'm giving up everything that I've wanted my whole life? And she was trying you to, watched. like, be like, we can still see each other. And he's like, I'm not a whore. And it's bi- like, bitch, neither am I. Mm-hmm. The fuck? And I'm not you're paying trash. you. So <laughs> technically, you're less than a whore because whores make money. You just fuck Fear me for a night with no vows. Because Rhaenyra is always trying to bridge the gap with Allison, too. She's always trying to be like, mm-hmm. bitch, why are we fighting? We really should be on the same side, like women supporting women. And Allison's always choosing violence. And like when they're raising their cups to each other at the dinner, I was like, oh, girlies, come on, come back together. Because I do really need some lesbian shit to happen between them. But I also feel like it's not going to because Rhaenyra, you deserve better than crazy cuckoo for Coco Boss Allison. But also. You deserve I mean, your uncle. Eh, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, this is too good to be true. But I wanted them to actually make up and be allies. I loved when they had that moment where it did seem like that was going to happen. Then Otto's face being like. I think they genuinely both were like, let's let I, bygones be bygones. I think it was genuine in that moment. I really think it was. And when Rainier was like, I'll return. And Allison like wanted her to stay. Mm-hmm. I a thousand percent believe that that was genuine on both of their sides. But then once I think then when Allison stepped back from the situation had some time to like decompress from it think like more logically when her emotions weren't in the way for it she was like you know what that can't happen and then mm-hmm. when she picked out the one word she wanted to from Viserys's dying breath then it was all for nothing but yeah that shit was fucking tragic when she was like oh you mean Aegon like our son Aegon and it's like god damn it Allison no don't ruin everything fucking tragic ass bitch We need the stakes to raise, but I just would have liked to see, because there can still be tension if Allison and Rhaenyra are, like, on the same side. It's okay. I'm excited to see where things go. Mm -hmm. Me too. Go Damon for going to go get his children all dragons and Rhaenyra's children dragons. Good for him. Um, He's putting in the moves. Yeah, enjoy that. Um, I'm really excited to see where his character goes moving forward. Really excited for Rhaenyra's. And excited to see them as a team. I, like, think they're great characters and individually and they're both great characters together so I'm like obviously that's my favorite thing to watch on screen is the two of them so especially like their wedding Mm -hmm. the like traditional wedding that they did that was so cool yeah I feel like from episode eight oh I did like how his dying words were like my love yeah he like saw Emma, Emma in the afterlife. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really think I have anything else for right now. I am excited for next week only because it's, you know, the penultimate episode of the season. Mm-hmm. It has Game of Thrones has a track record of having like some of the wildest, wildest second to last episodes yeah. of all the seasons. So I'm really hopeful. Like after last week's episode, I feel like eight, nine, and ten are gonna be great. I'm hoping. Anyways. Mm-hmm. But yes, I'm very excited. Yeah. To see where everybody's at. It's like each week, you know, where are we going to be at? What's the time jump going to be like? Are we going to pick up right Mm -hmm. where we left off? Like I could see it opening with Viserys' funeral. I could see Mm -hmm. it opening with several years down the line. Like who fucking knows? Are there going to be flashbacks to when they were younger? Like if they want to incorporate this gay shit that I feel like they should. 
they could do flashbacks to when the girls were younger, like utilize those actresses again, because if not in this season, like they should utilize those actresses again next season for flashback scenes, in my opinion, because I feel like Mm. those actresses are super fucking talented. And like, Mm -hmm. even though the story has progressed beyond that point in time, I don't feel like the younger versions of them, like those stories, I don't think are done yet. That would just be my opinion as a creator. So many options, like so many opportunities for stories to be told. Yeah. Any which way. I'm just really excited about this show Same. in general. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do when it's done. <laughs> like, yeah. just when the season's done and we have to wait so much longer to get another one. It's going to be hard waiting for it. I know. Fucking tragic. I can't wait for Sunday. I can't wait for the finale. And we're going to be with you girlies every step of the way. We're going to be covering episodes 9 and 10. Yeah. I know people are requesting us to watch spooky things for spooky season. And we lie last girly. But we just, we can't because we're not together. We can't watch it together and make Michaela feel safe. And Haunting of Hill House Mm -hmm. will definitely deeply disturb Michaela. I know my best friend and I know that she will not <laughs> fare well in that. <laughs> well, And also, you don't have time for a TV show either, so yeah. it's on both of us. Yes, no, you're right. I had pitched Dahmer and th- don't have time for it, so if you yeah. don't have time for that, we don't have time for Hill House either. So, yes. it's on both of us that and, we're not yeah, getting that. It's but any movies, any scary movies, that's 100% on me, because we have time to watch a movie. I'm just not going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't have time for a TV so. show right now, so... Yeah, we're going to be back to cover episode nine next week and then the finale the week after that. Very excited to have more in-depth conversations about this. I'm just glad that you're caught up so that way, like, in live time, we can be chatting about it. Because, bitch, I was screaming at Sir Kristen Cole. Because back when, like... All that shit started when he started acting like a piece of garbage was still back when it was like, oh, Kristen Cole for you. And I was like, I don't want to like tell you Mm -hmm. so that that way you would like know that that was coming. But I was like, oh, my God, this fucking dude, I want to drop kick him. I was never like, oh, Kristen Cole. I don't what you had no reason to not like him. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you. And I didn't want to like spoil that for you as you see the natural progression of him becoming a piece of garbage. Incel looking ass bitch. also, why do the men never age besides Viserys? Everyone right. else looks the same. Right. But then they had to age the women. I would like Damon to get his short hair back for a little bit. We only got like what one episode of him being a short haired king. That was hot. Girlies, buckle the fuck up for this show. I can't. Is that it? Alrighty. Well, Ta-da. that's it for today. Please follow us in all of the links in the description of this episode. We're on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. If you're not watching and listening or really, we're everywhere, so please love and support. Be Lilas. Sayonara. Bye. <laughs>